Hello guys, welcome to the second part of the tutorial and today we're going to be going through video tracking and camera solving, importing a 3D track into Blender and also adding 3D elements into your scene using the Lenovo Yoga Pro 9i Copilot Plus PC powered by Intel Core Ultra 9 processor and new AI era begins. So the first step of creating a visual effects shot is actually tracking your video footage. There are various softwares you can use such as After Effects, Synthize and PF Track. My favorite software is PF Track and I will be teaching you guys today how to track your footage using PF Track. Okay, so the first step is converting your footage into an image sequence. An image sequence is better for tracking and it will give you a better solve for your camera. So first you will open After Effects and then you will import your footage into After Effects. So we've imported the footage into After Effects. We go to File, Export, Add to Render Queue and then from the menu we go to JPEG sequence. Also you want to export a lower resolution files so it's not heavy on your computer and then select the folder where you want to export your footage. Let's say over here and then we hit render. So it's going to take a few minutes to export your footage. You will have your footage in the form of image sequence. So basically if your footage is 10 seconds, so we have let's say 30 frames per second, so you will have around 300 image. Okay, so the second step will be opening PF Track. After opening PF Track and exporting your footage from After Effects, you will need to navigate to your footage and then import your footage into PF Track. Over here, you need to change the frame rate to 30 frames per second because this is the original frame rate of the footage. And then right click on your footage, go to Auto Track. Now you need to set your uh, tracking, the auto track option here to a better accuracy. And then after that, you will hit auto track. Okay, so now after hitting the auto track, the software will go through each and every frame of your footage and it will track and keep the points in place. Now the tracking is done for our video. Now we need a camera solve. Right click on the auto track node and then we choose camera solver. After choosing the camera solver, we just hit solve all. Now the software will solve your tracking and it will give you an error margin over here. So the lesser the error, the better the track. So for example, right here, our error is 0.3, is 0 0.2 or 0.22 or 0.23, which is very low solve error. And uh, of course, this is that means our track is solid and perfect. Okay, after getting the camera solve, right now we can see the floor grid. It's not lining up to the points or it's far away from the points. So we will need to align this up and the way to, the best way to line this up is just to choose our, one of the points on the floor and then we set this as an origin. So the software will move the grid to the lineup of the points that were already created. After the grid moves to the points, now we need to orient our scene. We'll go to utilities and then choose the orient scene node. From the orient scene node we go to rotate so we can orient our scene the way we want and uh, make it line up with the to make the grid line up with the with the floor. I guess over here I'm uh, rotating the uh, the points to line up with the grid. So as you can see there is all these points over here shown on the second part of the screen. It, all of these points will represent our floor and if we line up the grid with these points that means the tracking is perfect. Okay, so now we're lining it up. Alright, so... So now if we scrub through the footage on the software, the grid stays on place and this is where we want our animation to be. After that, for example, to test the track, we need to add some test objects. And we can try this by going to right click on the, uh, on the orient scene and then geometry and then choose test objects. You have to connect your nodes. Choose one of the test objects over here. I like to use the, uh, the thumb track or the thumb track. Add it to the scene. And then we can add it to one of the points. And then when we scrub through again, you can see the, uh, the 3D object is sticking in place and that means you're getting a good track. Okay, now it's time to export your tracking data from the tracking software to use it later on on, the, on Blender or in the 3D package, whatever 3D package you're using, either Cinema 4D or Blender or any other software. So we'll have to right click on the test object and then 
go to the export, choose the export node, and then choose where you want to save your uh, tracking data. Let's say we're going to be, uh, we will select the uh, desktop and then name it whatever you want. I'll call it tracking data, enter, and then hit export. Also, I want to remind you that this software can export your tracking data into various, there, there is so many extensions that you can use from to export your tracking data such as FPX or Collada. I like to use Collada because it's very simple to export and almost most of the softwares, they will understand the Collada file or Collada extension. So I'll choose Collada from here and uh, I'll export my tracking data into to the desktop. Press save, export. All right, so after exporting your tracking data from PFTrack, it's time to import it into Blender. So first of all, you open Blender and then go to the file menu, import, choose the Collada extension because this is what we exported from PFTrack. All right, and then you go to the folder where you exported the file and then choose it and then it will import the tracking data for you over here. Now you need to import your footage as the uh, background sequence. You can do that by selecting the camera on the viewport. Go to the camera settings and then go to the background images, add an image, open, and then you need to open the sequence. And go to desktop. Here's the sequence that we tracked before. Open and also over here you go to the camera, choose horizontal. And then when you move your camera around, you can see that everything is sticking in place. Now it's time to build your scene and of course adding your HDRI image that will give you a realism for your 3D objects that was already added in your scene. I like to go here and uh, disable the relationship lines from the viewport because so the viewport will not feel uh, too messy. We can also scale up your scene by scaling up the scene node over here from the, from the menu. You can scale it up and down. Okay, let's start building the, uh, the floor mesh. You can add a plane, then you can scale it up. And then when you scrub through the footage again, as you can see, everything is lining up correctly because the tracking was perfect. Okay, let's add material or texture to this plane. Okay, select your floor plane and then go to the shader editor and then add new material over here. And then control T by enabling the node wrangler from the add-on menu. And then from the image texture, you can you press open, go to your sequence where you saved it before in the desktop, choose your files, and then here from the texture coordinates, you need to connect the window to the vector. And now when you go to render preview, you have, um, you have your floor plane having the, the same textures as in the video. Of course, you'll have to switch to the, uh, the cycles engine, render engine, so you'll be able to view. Okay, as you can see, the floor plane is not really, um, it doesn't have the same lighting or it doesn't have the same environment lighting. So you will have to use the HDRI that we have taken uh, right after shooting the video. So the way how to set up your HDRI into the scene, you'll go to the uh, world shader and then press control T again. You will have the environment texture. You will have to navigate to your HDRI that you have already saved from Photoshop. I've teached you guys in the first episode of this tutorial how to export your HDRI. So you can go to that file on your desktop, import it to your scene, and then over here from this menu, you need to select Scene World. Now Blender will be using the HDRI as the source of light for every 3D object in the scene.
Okay, as you can see, the floor plane is still, it's not well lit or it's not, it doesn't, the lighting of the, of the plane doesn't match the lighting of the environment. So you will have to add a light path node. Light path. And then you will have to connect it to a sky texture node over here. You'll have to also get a mix shader node connect to the second socket and connect the sky texture to the first socket and then maybe we can add only the glossy ray in the factor and then connect it to the surface so now by this way we're getting all the reflections from our hdri but we're getting the scene light from the sky texture node reduce the uh, the sun strength or the sun intensity on the sky texture node to 0.1 and we'll have to probably have to make the floor plane bigger so it covers the whole floor area just like that all right still the floor plane is still a little bit uh, is not matching the the environment lighting of the scene so we will have to play with the uh, principal BSDF also, we can use curves node, add it to the node tree and then reduce the highlights. And now we can see everything is almost matching. Yep. All right, now we have a floor plane that is matching the environment light or the real environment light of the scene. Okay, now it's time to add your 3D object to the scene. Since you already got everything lined up perfectly, we also get the lighting like perfectly matching the real light of the environment. Yeah, so today I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to add this car to the scene and make it drift, um, basically using a very easy way, which is a, the launch control add-on. This car model comes with the add-on for free. You can download it and you can also test the animation on it. So I'm gonna be adding this model to, to the scene over here. As you can see, after adding the model, the car feels a, lo a lot smaller than how it should be. So we will have to scale up the car to match the dimensions of the, of the whole scene. So right now I'm just uh, scaling down the scene node so the car feels bigger. All right, now it looks a bit more realistic and it looks like it belongs more to the scene after adjusting the, the scale. Okay, now after adding the car, we need to rig the, the car model. And the, the good thing about this add-on is that you can just rig your car using just one click. So basically, we're just gonna select the car collection and then press on rig vehicle and it will rig the car for us. Now, basically the car comes, or the rig comes with a very basic animation, which is just the, uh, the car model just going straight or on a straight line. Over here, you can go down the menu and you can select one of the car animations, such as uh, over here, we have a very cool drift animation that we can use, which is drift 02. Just select it and then press on animate vehicle. Okay, now the vehicle is drifting, but it's not lining up with the camera movement. So now we have to just move the camera around until we get the, uh, the perfect framing for the shot. So for example, right now we can move the, the whole or the, the scene backwards. We can also move it on the X axis and move it to the left until things line up in frame. I think I like this now. It's, uh, the car is not going out of frame anymore or it's almost in frame. Um, so you can play around with this until the, uh, the scene is perfect and the animation is lined up perfectly with the camera. So as you can see, now the car is drifting. So basically, if you switch back to the render preview and let's see how this is gonna look like. 
Now the car looks very overexposed and I believe it's because of the material or texture issue. You can just go to the shader editor and go to the objects and then probably go to the, the bigger node tree of the car material and reduce the specular and also Yeah, you can reduce maybe the the color or make it darker so it matches the scene. You can also make this one a bit darker. And also you can play around with the metallic and roughness over here. Maybe it's too metallic, so maybe push this back to zero. Put this back to zero as well, 0.1. Usually the car material is more uh, reflective and more glossy, so just play around with the textures over here to add more gloss you can increase the coating you can feel like it's more glossy right here that's how it looks if you just crop this through and make it more glossy increase the roughness a bit a little bit i still feel like it's overexposed so i'll bring down the the color and now Yeah, now it looks a bit more realistic. You can also, also as you can see, the tires are a bit uh, overexposed. You can just go to the tire material and then go to the speckler and decrease the speckler value. And now it will get darker. Also, you can increase the, uh... all right, now I think the car uh, looks a bit more realistic and I feel like it blends more with the scene. Alright guys, so since we're done with the animation, it's time to render your video and here's the results.